Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG channel. My name is Reed, and today we're going to be going over the anatomy and electrophysiology behind the concept of right ventricular hypertrophy, RVH for short. And so, as the name suggests, right ventricular hypertrophy is when the right ventricle gets hypertrophied or builds a lot of muscle. And so, this can be, um, one, it can be pathologic in real life, and two, it can have um, certain um, evidence on ECG. And so before we go into this rhythm, we're going to be going over this just one ECG rhythm. Don't forget that you can download this PDF down in the description um, so that you can follow along uh, with this video. And let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of the right ventricular hypertrophy and how it's going to represent itself on our ECG leads. It's really important to, to learn it from this perspective. So remember that the right ventricle is sitting right here in our coronal leads. And so if we kind of zoom in on this, remember that normal depolarization occurs throughout the ventricles when the AV node passes that signal down through our bundle of His, His Purkinje system. Remember that our left ventricle, which is right here, is a lot stronger than the right ventricle normally, right? And so when the we get this axis, this wave of depolarization, that wave of depolarization kind of favors the left ventricle, kind of favors the apex. But what I'm getting at is it is that the axis of depolarization usually is within this quadrant, right? It's in between zero degrees and it's in between positive 90 degrees, right? It's going down and to the left, okay? Now, imagine if I erase all of this and we give this person right ventricular hypertrophy, okay? And I'm going to represent that by this RVH, right ventricular hypertrophy. I'm going to just draw in red all the muscle that this person's right ventricle has built. This person's right ventricle has built a ton of muscle. It is hypertrophied, okay? So now, when the AV node takes that signal and sends it down to his Purkinje system, we still have a functional his Purkinje system. Remember, the his Purkinje system is what allows for our QRS to be narrow. But look what happens is we get forces that are starting to be drawn towards the right ventricle. And so we get an axis of depolarization that is starting to head towards the right ventricle versus the left, right? And so our QRS axis in a patient with right ventricular hypertrophy will fall in this quadrant, right? It will be our QRS axis in a person with right ventricular hypertrophy will be greater than positive 90 degrees, right? It'll be in this region because my right ventricle is drawing those QRS uh, uh, forces that direction. So a couple criteria for RVH so far is that one, we will continue to maintain a narrow QRS complex because our his Purkinje system works, which is less than 120 milliseconds. And two, we will have right axis deviation, right, greater than positive 90 degrees in that quadrant that we just said. So, so far, that's what we've got. That's what we'll see on our limb leads, the coronal view. Let's come over to our transverse view, and let's get the rest of this criteria kind of dialed in. And so, remember that the right ventricle sits right here. The left ventricle sits right here. And so, once again, I'm going to draw in red. This right ventricle is just strong. It's really strong got a lot of hypertrophy going on. Usually the left ventricle draws all the signal, but in this case, the right ventricle is going to start drawing signal. And so instead of depolarization usually happening kind of towards the apex of the heart, like we usually see, we're going to see depolarization occurring in this direction. It's going to start to bias the right ventricle, right? And so the right ventricle is captured really by V1. Those forces, they really, when they kind of turn into the right ventricle, we really see those in V1. And so V1 will have a 
significantly positive QRS complex. That's usually not the case because the usual vector of depolarization is away from that towards the left ventricle. But in this case, my right ventricle is hypertrophied. So we will have a tall R wave. And that R wave will be greater than 7 millimeters. Okay? Will be greater than 7 millimeters. And so that is my criteria from my transverse view or my precordial leads for right ventricular hypertrophy. So you could be greater than 7 millimeters. So what do we have? V1, the R wave will be greater than 7 millimeters. And there are some other criteria that people use. I don't really use this so often. You could also have in V1 the ratio where the R wave is greater than the S wave, meaning that the positive forces are greater than the negative forces. You can use those sometimes. You could also um, use, sometimes people will say there will be a dominant negative S wave. Some people will use a dominant S wave in V5 or V6. However, I'm not really a huge fan of that one. That's okay. You can use whatever one you would like. Remember that ECG isn't the best for ventricular hypertrophy in the sense that we're not looking at it ourselves, right? An echocardiogram would be the best. So sometimes you can see dominant S waves and lateral leads, but um, really I want you to focus on like the most well-used criteria is in V1, those R waves that are greater than 7 millimeters or an R wave that is greater than the S wave, right? Meaning that my R wave is greater than my S wave. Remember that we must have a narrow QRS complex because our Hisperkinji system, the highway system that conducts our QRS is still functioning. So we should have a narrow QRS that's less than 120 milliseconds. And we should have right axis deviation on our limb leads because our signal is going to be favoring the right ventricle. So let's take a look at our ECG that has to do with right ventricular hypertrophy. And so in this case, we've got a sinus rhythm. You can see we've got a sinus rhythm here, are our P waves. Our P waves are conducting to our QRS complexes. And so when I look at my QRS, I see that it is narrow. My QRS is narrow. It is less than 120 milliseconds or less than three small boxes. And so when I calculate my QRS axis, I see that my QRS is negative in lead one, and we would say, I'd, I'd almost give it isoelectric in AVF, maybe a hair positive, right, if we look really, really, really closely, but we'll call that isoelectric in AVF, and so that tells me that it's going perpendicular to AVF, but away from lead one, and so let's take a look at our diagram here. So if AVF is up and down, and we have a isoelectric AVF. That means that my signal is going perpendicular. Remember, isoelectric means perpendicular. So that means my signal is going perpendicular to AVF along this axis. But we need to determine which way it's going. It's going away. It's going negatively in lead one. So that means it's going to be going this direction. And so that means my axis is like 180 degrees. 180 degrees. And so we definitely have right axis deviation. And so we see right axis deviation and we think, what could cause this right axis deviation? The first thing that you should come to your mind is, does this person have right ventricular hypertrophy, right? And so and this is, of course, in the setting of our sinus rhythm. So we know that the AV node is what's conducting the signal down. So I look in V1, and I see these dominant R waves. And that's not typical of V1. And I measure the R wave from the baseline to the apex. And you can see that that would be well over 7 millimeters. But we can count. We've got, what, 3, 8, probably 10 millimeters of our R wave in V1. Our R wave is definitely larger than the S wave, right? So the R is definitely greater than the S in V1. And because that's R wave 
is greater than seven millimeters in V1, that confirms our diagnosis of right ventricular hypertrophy. And so you see right ventricular on uh, hypertrophy on ECG. It's like, what are the causes, right? Let's just talk about really quickly, you know, what patients do you want to really screen for this on an ECG? Well, people with chronic lung disease. Why? Well, remember the right ventricle feeds blood via the pulmonary arteries to the lungs. And if someone has lung disease, they'll probably have chronic pulmonary hypertension. And so that right ventricle is pumping against a, a lot of uh, pressure in the pulmonary vasculature. And so it's going to need hypertrophy. Um, it's going to remodel, get stronger. So lung disease, you can see it. Somebody who has like chronic pulmonary emboli. That can happen. People that have left-sided heart failure, right? If your left heart cannot pump blood forward, then you get a congested blood coming into the left side of the heart, which we know the right ventricle is pumping blood to the lungs and then to the left side of the heart. So if the left heart is congested, then the right heart is going to have a lot of strain on it. So there's a lot of causes. Um, there's plenty more of this. So uh, I hope this helps you guys understand the um, what we see with right ventricular hypertrophy on ECG. Remember, we're going to have one, a narrow QRS. Two, we are going to have right axis deviation. And three, we will have an R wave greater than seven millimeters in V1 or an R that's greater than our S wave. So all telling us and giving us just more and more data that this person has a right ventricular hypertrophy. And so if you want to get better at ECGs, don't just stop at RVH. Think about there are other chambers in the heart, right? Does this person have right atrial enlargement? Do they have left atrial enlargement? Do they have left ventricular hypertrophy? If you don't understand these concepts, go look at those videos, right? Because typically people don't just have disease of one chamber in isolation. So use your clinical minds as well as your electrocardiographic minds as you're going through these videos. And um, yeah, keep your curiosity going. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. Um, consider subscribing to the page if you enjoy this content. And we will see you on the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.